Okay, so now next topic going to be what? This is the factors that are affecting the enthalpy change of hydration. So what do you think? What can be the factors that can affect enthalpy change of hydration? So there are two factors that we're going to be affecting it. The first factor is ionic chain, ionic charge, and the other factor is the radius. Let me see what people had to say about it. Okay, this, it's okay. Uh, so standard enthalpy chain of hydration is affected by the amount of ions that are attracted. See, this is really important. Okay, agar, um, hydration means the water is involved, water will going to surround the ions. So for that, it is really important that how many ions will going to be there in the, um, how many ions will going to be there in, in water. And then the radius of the ion matters uh, a lot once again. So let's see the description. The first description, it says ionic radius. How does this affect? When it comes to ionic radius, um, uh, enthalpy change of hydration become more exothermic will decrease in ionic radius. What did I say? My statement is if there is a decrease in ionic radius, so what will be the change? Then enthalpy change of hydration will be more exothermic. And why does that happen? This happens because, number one, smaller ions. Have a greater charge density. And this leads to what? Stronger ion dipole attraction. Between what? Between water molecules. And ion solution. <clears throat> so what happens? More energy is released. More exothermic. Is there any question related to this? Awesome. Then we are quickly moving ahead towards the ionic charge. So when it comes to the ionic charge, what do we say that uh, the enthalpy change of hydration is more exothermic? When will it be more exothermic? When the larger ionic charges. All right, and why does it happen? It happens because, uh, what do we say? We say larger ionic charges. leads to what? Greater charge densities. And this greater charge densities will, uh, leads to what? A strong ion dipole attractions. Same reason. Between what? Between water molecules and ions in solution. So it become more exothermic. 
so if this thing is clear to you all then what i want you people to do is you need to explain explain what you need to explain two things explain with the reason that is more exothermic or endothermic number 1 number 2 So these are the two examples that I've given you. It's about calcium oxide and magnesium. Um, so this question is for uh, calcium oxide and potassium chloride. You need to do the comparison of calcium oxide that whose energy is more exothermic and more endothermic. And this one is between magnesium sulfate and barium sulfate that uh, whose energy is more exothermic and more endothermic. Are you clear with the questions that I've asked you? Okay. So for this, you need to do the comparison of both of them and tell me with the reason that which one is more exothermic and endothermic. And for this, you have to tell me which one is more endothermic and exothermic. So this is your homework. I'm not going to start the class next till I will get the answers of these. So please do send me these answers as quick as possible. We are done with another topic. We are done almost, yeah. We are done with another chapter, which is enthalpy change of solution. We did let that is energy and bond have a cycle. We did enthalpy change of the solution. And next we will be starting off with entropy change. And then only one topic will be left for Gibbs free energy and then chemical energetics will be done. So it's a good speed, but um, before I conclude, I would request one thing and that is I'll be sending you the worksheets so before the next class, um, not this week, next week's before uh, classes, which is on Tuesday, I would request you to please solve those worksheets and share it with me. Are, is that okay? All right. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll be waiting for the answers. Allah Hafiz, everyone. Everything will be uploaded on the channel. Now keep watching. Help us.